weekend, I was in charge of our little apple stand selling our homemade cider and apples, and if we could make $100 on a weekend, that was really something special. And you dream. You dream big dreams that would take you to larger fields, hoping that someday you might be the Lion Star, you'd be the Bobby Lane, or you'd be the Doak Walker playing against the Packers on Thanksgiving Day. And my dad, on occasion, would come with the good news on a Wednesday night saying, tomorrow we're going to go down to Briggs Stadium in Detroit and see the Lions play, and he would take us to Briggs Stadium. And Thanksgiving was family, big family. The more aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents that could be there, the better the holiday. But that turkey cooking and cooking throughout the midday, reminding us of the feast to come with the, the mashed potatoes and the gravy and the stuffing and, of course, the pumpkin pie and the apple pie. Yes, Thanksgiving Day. Family and football and the feast you don't need much to be rich on Thanksgiving Day. And for the 55th year, the Thanksgiving holiday includes Detroit Lions football. Many families have gathered among the sellout crowd of 80,000 at the Pontiac Silverdome. Four-time AFC defending champion Buffalo dominating in the 90s here against a desperate Detroit Lions team, each seeking a win that would brighten their playoff hopes. Hello, everyone, and again, a happy Thanksgiving. Dick Enberg along with Bob Trumpy, and we have a football feast as well. Yes, we do, and, and I think the theme today has been desperate for Detroit. The Lions can take a page from the Chicago Bears last week, the way they executed the onside kick. Every page of the playbook for the Detroit Lions is available today. Reverses, fake punts, fake field goals. They are 5-6. and six. they got to try anything to win this game, Dick. Pleased to be here. An apple picker from Michigan and a dairy farmer from Illinois. What do you remember about this holiday? I, I think it's it's Thanksgiving dinner at my grandmother Trumpy's house. And one of the great traditions there was to for her to make her homemade rolls. She threw everybody out of the kitchen. The last thing she did before we ate was make those rolls. And I can't pass a bakery, Dick, without thinking of my grandma Trumpy. Oh, I could see that butter melting inside those I, rolls right now. I ate dozens. <laughs> Well, the tradition of this holiday continues. The tradition that includes pro football on Thanksgiving. Millions of families watch, and as it touches all corners of America, it includes the man who holds the nation's highest office. One of my most memorable Thanksgivings was last Thanksgiving, because it was the last Thanksgiving I ever spent with my mother. We were all up at Camp David. We had many members of our family there, and we were watching the Thanksgiving Day pro football game. My mother was a great pro football fan. She loved the game. It was a very exciting one. We were all screaming and yelling. But the thing I remember most is that I knew she was ill. I looked at my mother. I looked at my daughter. I looked at my wife. And I knew what Thanksgiving was all about. I hope every one of you today has a chance to enjoy this day and to know what Thanksgiving is all about. To honor America, please stand and sing along with Motown's own world-famous singing sensation, the Four Tops, in our national anthem, under the direction of Michael Sekich, while the Combined Armed Forces Color Guard from Selfridge Air Force Base, under the command of Sergeant First Class Kelly, present the colors. Oh, 
satyrs, that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the free. Happy Thanksgiving, America. Well, this huge crowd of 80,000 at Pontiac, Michigan, and the flavors of the holiday ready and football, the main course at the moment, and with us down on the field is Hannah Storm. Well, it's quite emotional for the Detroit Lions down here on the field. They're home, and this game has always been a pivotal one, indeed one that could turn their season around. However, for the Buffalo Bills, there was a big question mark before the game. The status of Bruce Smith, would he play or not? Well, he did not decide until just before kickoff. Indeed, he is going to start in this game, but we have to keep a couple of things in mind. He doesn't like to take medication. He has a bruised rotator cuff and tendon in that left shoulder, which will be very painful during the game today. He also has not put any extra padding on that. Team doctor Richard Weiss told me, Dick, that uh, he is at risk somewhat in aggravating the injury. The injury really will not heal for about another four days, but they have no choice. The Bills know they have to win this one, or they're going to have 10 days to think about a loss before they meet Miami. Dick. Thank you, Hannah. Bob, uh, in years past, where Buffalo at this point of the season had a two, maybe a three-game lead, they could have had Smith rest for the next 10 days, and as they will have the next weekend off, but that really isn't one of the options for Marv Levy today. Uh, you're right, Dick. In fact, the Buffalo Bills are saying we're in the playoffs now. It's still the regular season, but one loss puts us out of any real mix in the playoffs, so they recognize the pressure, that's for sure. There is one of the best ever at returning kicks. Eight career kick return touchdowns. The veteran Mel Gray from Purdue. He has returned two for a score this season. Steve Christie gets it underway. Gray at the eight. crowd. Kurt Schultz knocked him down. A 35-yard return. Lomas Brown, a pro bowler. Bowens, Glover, underrated. Wydell Lutz, the offensive front for the Detroit Lions. Dave Craig, the veteran from Milton College of Wisconsin for the injured Scott Mitchell. The, well, what can you say? There'll be a lot of adjectives today. Barry Sanders. Perriman and Moore are the wideouts. Moore has nine touchdown catches. Aubrey Matthews comes in in the three wide. Ron Hall is the tight end. Craig appears to be changing his call on the first play. Double pumps, and it's Ty Halleck. A second tight end out to the 49-yard line, a gain of nearly seven. The Buffalo defense, they're in their 1994 uniforms. The Lions are in their 35 suits. It's Hanson Wright and Bruce Smith does start. We'll be watching him closely. Cornelius Bennett, Marv Kispat, Mark Maddox, and Daryl Talley in his 200th consecutive game. The I'll backers Washington and you. Smith at the corners and Jones and Darby at safety. Two snaps, don't they? <laughs> Jason Hansen for the point after. Montgomery, the holder. Craig was earlier in the year, but then with the injury, they had to change 
at that position. It's 7-0 Detroit. Two plays, 47 seconds, and a 7-0 lead. Watch the draw that Barry Sanders has on the linebackers. They're all up at the line of scrimmage. Everybody's yelling, run, run, run. I don't think Dave Craig can throw it any farther. But he certainly throws it accurately. An easy score for Herman Moore. And Detroit jumps on top. Now the Lions roar here in Pontiac as Herman Moore played at the University of Virginia where he was also a class high jumper at seven feet three inches and in a moment we'll show you he also must have taken some drama classes <laughs> with the Cavs. Well put. Did he ever set up that playback pass as uh, Sanders lateraling to Craig and Craig tossing it 51 yards to Moore. Russell Copeland and uh, Yonel Jordan are deep as Hansen kicks it off. Jordan at the four. Finds a crease. Runs into his own blocker and is tackled at the 35-yard line by Van Malone. 31-yard return. Let's go back to the touchdown. All right, at the top of the screen, the line focuses your attention. It's Herman Moore, and the defensive back is Thomas Smith. Now watch the effect that Herman Moore just kind of sauntering off the line of scrimmage has. And as soon as the cornerback squats, he accelerates. He did a great job of acting there, Dick. Nice start. Jim Kelly comes out throwing and hits Andre Reed. That connection was good for 15 receptions last Sunday in the Green Bay victory. Reed now the number seven receiver all time as he's moved his numbers with uh, that catch up to 655. And I notice uh, Buffalo here going right to the line of scrimmage back to the hurry up offense. Second and one. Thurman Thomas. <laughs> Thomas and a flag goes down. Thomas. With an apparent first down, we'll check the penalty. Mike Johnson in the middle of that Honolulu and blue and silver defense of the Lions. It's Fina Crafts, Paul the Pro Bowler, Davis and Parker, blocking for Jim Kelly in the offense. Thomas, again, one of the leading rushers in the league. Carwell Gardner, the blocker. Reed, one of the superb receivers. Copeland for the injured Don Beatty. Metzlar's the tight end. When they go to three wide, Bill Brooks, who now has 504 career catches joins Reed holding against Buffalo is the call John Davis and that'll take it back to the 34 yard line second and 11. Reed in the slot left Kelly looking for him and goes to Metzelars and the tight end out to the 42 where Willie Clay makes the tackle. Let's check the Lions defense. Porsche, Spindler, and Pritchett in the 3-4. One of the few teams still using it. Broderick Thomas, former number one pick from Tampa Bay. Spielman and Johnson inside. Font says the best uh, pair in the league. Scroggins rushes the passer. McNeil and Massey at the corners. Clay and veteran Benny Blades at safety. And Milton Mack is the extra DB. there for Thurman Thomas. He needed three for a first down. Chris Spielman 54 and on the tackle along with Kelvin Pritchett. Uh, uh, Dick, this is the problem with the hurry up offense. The Buffalo Bills, this is their third game in 11 days. This is a veteran football team. And when the offense goes hurry up, three or four downs and out, ex extreme pressure on the defense. I don't think this is smart for Buffalo to do. The more deliberate they can be today, the better in the long run they're going to be. Gray, a weapon whether it's kickoffs or punt return, stands back at the 10. Chris Moore averaging just under 42 a kick. A typical very high kick for Moore, but some room for Gray at the 18 and tripped up at the 24. 39-yard kick, six-yard return. The Lions lead by seven. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By J.C. Penney, doing it right. By Magnavox. Hey, we make technology people want. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Welcome back. Dave Craig is connected on the longest touchdown pass of the season for the Detroit Lions. 51 yards on the second play of the game. Detroit 7-0 and have the ball at the 24 after the punt. 
Sanders, the lone running back. And the great star from Oklahoma State tripped up after a gain of two. Dave Craig, number 17 for the Lions, but more than a number. Here's a, a gentleman. Someday they're going to do a movie on him. If there's been a long shot to star in the National Football League, this is it. Yeah. Milton, Wisconsin. The school closed his senior year. Free agent signed for $500 bonus, and now all he is is 10th in touchdown passes, 16th in passing yardage, 14th in completions all time. He's with the big names, the big boys. Dave Craig. Fake to Sanders. Craig. Is it good? Yes. Brett Perriman has his first catch and a first down at the 42, 16 on the play. You know, the one thing about Dave Craig, he leads in a lot of categories, and one of them is fumbles loss. He says, hey, I don't mind that. That means you've played a lot, been on the field a lot. But if you're out there watching today and you're a dreamer, Dave Craig is your hero. There is no question. Not only did he, did he know how much his bonus was with the Seahawks, $500, but he even rem remembered that the net after taxes was 365.85. And we'll let him keep the pen. <laughs> Craig again. Former Seattle Seahawk goes long for Perriman. And too long with Mickey Washington on the coverage. Just to complete what Craig has done. Being in the top 16 in those three categories, touchdowns, passing yardage, completions. Bradshaw didn't do it. Stabler, Namath, Sammy Ball, Y.A. Tittle. Elway, Bobby Lane, Ken Anderson, Bob Greasy. And here's someone no one knew in that draft of 1980 and his uh, coach at Milton talked Seattle into giving him a try. All he wants to be remembered as is a consistent quarterback. He said, I'll settle for that. Sanders drawing a crowd and he's close to the 45 yard line. Phil Hansen, and uh, let's take a look at Bruce Smith. Uh, he's uh, he's in a right-handed stance, Dick. Normally, Bruce Smith likes the left-handed stance. Still pursuing down the line. Uh, that's a tough. That's a tough kid right there. Bruce Smith can play with pain. He's done it throughout his career. But the worst thing a doctor can say to a professional football player: Look, go out there, and if you can stand the pain, you can play. There is no nothing you want to hear from a doctor like that. I mean, it just puts it right on your shoulders, Dick. Third down and seven for Craig. Under pressure, and fumbles the ball, and Buffalo has it. Kurt Schultz, now they're gonna call that a pass. Oh, that's not gonna make the Lions fans nor Fonts very happy. Perhaps yeah. or, uh, Craig uh, was throwing underhanded. This looks like Kent to Colby if this is a throw forward the former pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is a submarine ball. Yeah he right. was. He was trying to get it out to Sanders so uh, the Lions indeed are happy that he was able to get it away and the Buffalo fans denied although they're going to get the ball here on the punt from Greg Montgomery. Former kicker with the Oilers and kicked up north of Michigan State. And led the league in uh, Running average the last two years. Oh, does he boom one up in the rafters, but too far into the end zone and through. When we return, Buffalo Trail 7 0 has the ball at their 20. The 75th anniversary celebration in the National Football League, and the Lions in that spirit wearing their throwback uniforms at 1935, the second year they were here in Detroit. 34 was the first Thanksgiving Day game out at the University of Detroit Stadium. Berman Thomas finding some running room out to the 27, a pickup of seven. Chris Spielman, who leads the Lions again in tackles, makes another. He's uh, been the top Detroit tackler for six consecutive years out of Ohio State. Yeah, he almost needs a locker room by himself, especially at five and six. This is Thanksgiving. He is always in a foul mood. Well, after losing to Chicago, he said, even my eight-month-old daughter doesn't like me. And the Bills straight ahead for the first down across the 30-yard line. The ball Porsche makes the tackle on Thurman Thomas. As you watch Chris Spielman behind this defensive line, watch the line come to him. 
Uh, Lions problem defensively is they can't stand up against big offensive lines. They got pushed all over the field last week against Chicago and Wayne Font says we need a big inside rusher. They don't have him. Coming on first down to Reed get immediately after a short game as Willie Clay comes up from a safety spot Clay from Georgia Tech. Andre Reed he said Catch 15, and I feel real good about myself and turn on the set for Monday Night Football. Well, hey, they had to know Jerry Rice got 16. They were trying to erase my name in just one day. Thurman Thomas dumped for no gain, maybe a yard loss. The Thurminator from Oklahoma State looking for another 1,000-yard season. Four, five straight years over a thousand, and he's over 800 this year, and projected at 1,200 for Thomas. What a pickup he was! Bill Brooks with a catch, and it'll depend on the mark around the 41. If it's a first down, Benny Blades, who has played with a multitude of nagging injuries all year, makes the tackle, and the fans don't like the spot at all. Now there's seldom a game that involves the Detroit Lions when you don't constantly repeat the names of Benny Blades and Chris Spielman. Uh, Blades a huge safety and generally is playing deep. This is a two deep zone defense, but because of Thurman Thomas's ability to run the ball, been up at the line of scrimmage quite a bit already early in this game, Dick. First down, a great throw to a newly acquired Damon Thomas from Wayne State of Nebraska. Had his first catch last week, 17 yards, and in traffic, picks up 14 with this one. Now watch Kelly look all over the defense, comes right back to the outlet up through the seam. Uh, they're probably not going to give Thomas a lot of patterns, but at the same time, good ability to read the defense there, Dick. He's a good target, 6'2 and 215. Blitz, first down. And caught in the backfield is Kenneth Davis. Davis giving Thomas a breather and Mike Johnson, the veteran, former Cleveland Brown, a teammate of Bruce Smith's at Virginia Tech, right there to read it and deliver a loss. Uh, another part of the desperation of the Detroit Lions. Not really a big blitzing team, but came with the all-out blitz there. Just, they want to stop momentum here of the Buffalo Bills. Second and 14. safely at the 40 six yards shy of a first down that incident with uh, Jim Kelly and Andre Reed uh, we got a player down Tracy on the field Scroggins number 97 down uh, Kelly with a banged up hand and uh, surgical knees still that heart of a guy who is 26 will do anything he possibly can to win but when Kelly and Andre Reed had their problems two weeks ago uh, after last week as Scroggins is being addressed they did everything but kiss and make up. I mean, they were even cited buying China. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Kelly and Buffalo at the Lions 40 yard line. Remember two games ago at Pittsburgh, it was Kelly on the sidelines chewing the ears of receiver Andre Reed. Reed walking away as Kelly upset about the way Reed was running some patterns. And then last week, they certainly, as you said, Bob Trumpy, made up, and maybe they did go look for some porcelain. Yeah, well, two weeks ago in Pittsburgh, Jim Kelly got sacked seven times, hit about 20 other. He was looking for somebody to be angry at, and I think uh, Andre Reed was just the closest guy. Scroggins out with a shoulder injury. Pat Swilling, 56, replaces him. This is third and six. Snap directly to Thomas. Robert Porsche had it all the way. Porsche, not a big defensive lineman, but watch 91 right over here. He jumps inside the block. Thurman can't get by him. A direct snap to Thurman Thomas. Well, they, they are spreading this defense around, coming up with anything 55, they possibly can 35, here, Dick. 55. You're the voice of uh, the umpire. Two yard loss in the play and Gray back at the 10 yard line. Moore will try to deliver 
One of those high parachuting punts. And wait a minute. They may have seen the Gardner almost getting that one out of the end zone in mid-flight. But ruled a touchback, and the Lions will begin at the 20-yard line. Gardner does a great job. That's legal. But then, yeah, the man who recovered it went in the end zone, came back out. So, therefore, it is a touchback. Mark Pike. 443 left in the first, 7 0 Detroit. Sunday night, Earth 2. Humans make their first contact with aliens, and it could be deadly. An exciting all new Earth 2, and science awakens the dead and faces the consequences on an all new sequest. Then one woman married to two men at the same time. How'd you get away with it? Connie Seleka, she uh, led two lives. That's our Sunday lineup on NBC. Barry Sanders. And Sanders, as we pointed out, 2020 vision. Number 20 needs to run the ball at least 20 times. That's when the Lions are at their best. And while he's gained short yardage thus far, three tries, eight yards, it's the exposure. You know yes. sooner or later he'll break one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the next carry that Barry Sanders has might go for 80. That's at any time in the game. That's why you have to keep giving him the ball. Detroit last week against... Uh, Chicago only had six plays in the first quarter, so this offense is doing fine so far. Almost as many uh, plays in this first quarter for Detroit as the whole game against Chicago. Here to be Cornelius Bennett offsides and Sanders with two yards to the 25, and we'll check the call. Larry Nemers, the referee. Defense, offside, number 97. Five yards, repeat second down. Biscuit with an early jump. There's Biscuit right there. Again, part of the uh, the approach that, hey, let's try anything. The hard count by Dave Craig does draw an easy five yards for Detroit Lions. Legal, certainly usable. Second and short. Nothing there at all for Barry Sanders. Mark Maddox, number 55, penetrating along with Marcus Patton. Now, one of the things you have to do when you're playing against the Barry Sanders is make sure he bounces outside. You don't want him to cut back. And this uh, 34 defense of the Buffalo Bills, a very active front seven. Great quickness. They can stay on their feet. So this is a defense that Barry Sanders should have some difficulty against. In fact, Buffalo's defense has yet to allow a 100-yard rusher in this 94 season. And now trying to stop the man who has a sizable lead as the top rusher this season. Aubrey Matthews in motion. Wide open. And Matthews to the 40 and a first down. No one picked up the man in motion. Boy, John Wooden would be proud of this play. <laughs> you mean there's a pick and ball? <laughs> oh, yes. And it's run beautifully. Here are the two pickers. One of these guys is supposed to cover Matthews. He breaks wide open on the sideline. They do it beautifully. Just a little contact there. You know, you, you don't draw the foul. You just get in his way. Perfectly executed. Matthews from Delta State with his 18th catch in the first down. Craig to the sidelines and has another completion. Herman Moore close to a first down. Thomas Smith, the defender. Well, we wondered about the availability of uh, Bruce Smith. How well he do jumps inside Lomas Brown 75. That's vintage Bruce Smith. Helmet right in the chest. And when you watch this kid on tape, Herman Moore, Velcro. I mean, the softest hands I think I've seen in a long time. It just cradles in those mitts of his. Works out with his wife, Angela, who was a University of Virginia track athlete, 400 and 800 meters. He said, she's made me a better player. Sanders diving underneath the pile of linebackers and is inside the 45 of Buffalo. First down. 
Well, what would Barry Sanders need to break Eric Dickerson's mark of 21.05 in a season? 13.61 thus far. He'd have to average in these final five games 149 to do it. And uh, while that seems incredible a uh, challenge, <laughs> he's the kind of uh, talent that could uh, accomplish it. He can do it. If they give him enough shots, he can do it. He's got 10, he's got 12. You know what he said about rushing titles? He said, those are privileges. He said, I th that's not my, my promise. It's my privilege yes. if I can win the title. You know, the other thing, too, I thought was interesting, I asked him when we talked to him about just his ability to run. He said, look, I've always been small, 5'8", around 200 pounds. He said, I've had to be creative to be successful. That's why all the shake and bake. And when he went left high school, he's only 175 as a freshman at Oklahoma State. He got the 200, and has it been at 200 since then? Bennett leaning into the neutral zone. Oh, look at Sanders. Oh, not many can do that. It probably is going to be a five-yard penalty against <laughs> Buffalo anyway to the 35. But I, I'd like, as, as the official will mark the penalty, when you asked Barry yesterday, we talked for, with Sanders, who is a very quiet, unassuming. You're going to bring this oh, up, Bob. And, and, and Bob says, now, Barry, whom do you think is the best running back in the NFL? And he got his eyes big and he smiled. He said, no, that's that's just, you know, modestly. So that's just too tough. To, I, he's, and so Bob asked it a different way. He said, well, if you had to pay to see a running back, whom would you pay to see? He said, Bob, at my level, I don't have to pay to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for the answer. But if you give me a ticket and a choice, this is the kid I'd like to watch. I don't know how he does what he does. Sometimes he looks like the human hummingbird. You know, he's got he's got some jets going backwards. It was her offsetting penalty, so it's uh, they'll play it over, and that's just since. He was a rookie in 89. Sanders leading Thomas and Emmett and Marion Butts in rushing. And if he stays healthy, uh, who knows how, no far, how many agree. numbers. To think of Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders who are at the same university playing at the same time. Craig doesn't get it off. So five yards on the delay. And with that, oh, it's the end of the quarter. 7-0 Detroit. And we welcome you back to the Pontiac Silverdome where the Lions striking quickly. Second play of the game on a 51-yard touchdown lead 7-0. And there is a Mike Webster's counterpart. In fact, he mentioned him to us two days ago when he talked about those that he tried to model his talent. Ten-year veteran Kevin Glover said, I'll be home tonight. And uh, Washington, D.C. area, my wife sustained in her third year of law school and about to present him with a first child. Seven first down, Craig. Well protected. Wide open more again. Check that it's uh Brett Perriman. And he has 23 yards before Darby gets him down. And an injury on the play. And Dick, did you see how comfortable Dave Craig looked back in that pocket? Had lots of time. Perriman has to catch it twice. And is able to do so. A zone by Buffalo, a big area again, the threat of the run by Barry Sanders, draws the linebackers to the line of scrimmage, and there's that crease, there's that area you're looking for to complete the pass, Craig does. And May Mark Maddox, who was coming back to help out on the tackle, was the injured Buffalo Bill. Uh, his, his daughter Ashley is here in the Silver Dome to listen to Dad play. Ashley was four and uh, was born without sight. We'll take this time up. Lions five and six coming into this game have a seven nothing lead and threaten Mark Maddox a knee injury and he comes out Keith Goginius number 50 replaces him first and 10 just outside the Buffalo 10 for Dave Craig. Sanders to the four now let's see if Sanders comes out often in this situation. Uh, 
Wayne Fonts will put in a bigger back, Derek Moore and Eric Lynch with more power. In fact, it may surprise you that Barry Sanders, while rushing for 1,361 yards, has only three touchdowns yeah. this year. In that game against Tampa, he rushes for 237 yards, Dick, does not score. How is that possible? Well, as soon as they get into goal to go, usually as substitutions are made. Not this time. Sanders, oh, what a move! Touchdown! Four yards, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Are you happy now, Dick? <laughs> I'd like to see him in there down by the goal line, but I'm not the coach. <laughs> Boy, on that first down run of six and the touchdown run of four, he showed you in short yardage a variety of his skills. Hanson makes it 14 to nothing, Detroit. Watch him freeze players. And then still the strength to run through the tackle of Henry Jones, the strong safety for six. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. And by Compaq, look for the new Presario computers for that small business you call home. Now the Lions Thanksgiving thus far is a happy one. Barry Sanders running, complimenting an early pass play. Well, it was a fake to Sanders. He lateral back to Craig, and Craig threw long to Herman Moore, 51 yards. Sanders now with 36 yards rushing in the half. Jordan and Copeland deep for the kickoff. Hansen sends a long spinner into the end zone, and the Bills will take a touchback. 72-yard uh, kick by Hanson. Dick, back to this play. Here's Barry Sanders. He's going to make a little move inside. Look at the effect that it has on Marcus Patton. Now, Patton is a very athletic linebacker, but here's great, his greatest ability, Barry Sanders, freezes players. And then in two sets, two steps is going full speed. That's all that Barry Sanders does. Just that. And just, we, just that. We talked to Marv Levy and said, what do you tell your team about stopping Sanders? He said, don't try to grab him. Yeah. And that's what happened to Jones. Exactly. You've got to get a shoulder into him. Jim Kelly now down by 14. He's now six for six passing as he hits Thurman Thomas in the flat for four yards. There, met by Greg Jeffries, an extra defensive back. And uh, the ever-present Charles Christopher Spielman. Uh, now Buffalo forced to go to the hurry up, down 14 nothing, and again it, taking a chance because it puts a lot of pressure on this Buffalo Bills defense. Three wide receivers to the left, and underneath to Thomas who is slotted for a first down at the 32. Clay makes the tackle. Yeah, Buffalo had an empty backfield there, Dick. Must be a key for the Detroit Lions at an empty backfield. I blitz. Spielman, a little delay blitz. Can't quite get it there. Kent Hull just sticks out his left arm. Watch the center. No, it's Kraft, 66. Just sticks out his left arm to slow Spielman down. And another completion, this time to Russell Copeland. And a Buffalo first down at the 45. Massey and Jeffries with a stop. Well, I tell you, Jim Kelly throwing the ball very well. Copeland with the little hitch pattern. And soft coverage, I think, is the best way to put it. Uh, you see Robert Massey about six or seven yards off there. Kelly, the last couple of weeks, has thrown the ball very strongly. Eight for eight. 65 yards in this first half for Jim Kelly. Under a blitz, he gets it away to Andre Reed. And Reed collects a Buffalo first down at the 43. And that was Pat Swilling hitting Kelly as he threw. Last week, Green Bay made the mistake of, of uh, single coverage. This blitz means single coverage by Detroit. Reed, just as he did against Green Bay, the crossing pattern turns out to be a big play. As 
as the tackle is made by three Lions. Swelling, a name that the Lions fans haven't heard much this year after having such a sensational career at New Orleans, Kenneth Davis. And Davis, one of the better backup runners in the league, uh, collects about five on first down. What's the story on Pat Swilling? Well, I was interested to, to hear Wayne Font say that when, uh, when Pat Swilling's dad died, it took something out of him. That I was mean, a year ago. A year ago. It really took something out of him. He doesn't think Swilling has really uh, played the way he used to. Thinks he still can, but it's just taken him a while to get over his dad's death a year ago. Three years ago, he led the league with 17 sacks and was the defensive player of the year. On second and four, Kelly goes deep. That's and the flag is Bill Brooks. And, uh, boy, that's four flags. That's like uh, the wind hitting the late apple harvest. Boy, they, they were knocking down the culls and the ones off the top limbs. <laughs> this is a unanimous penalty. <laughs> Defensive pass interference, number 32. Spot foul, first down. Well, the Buffalo Bills have their deepest penetration. Willie Clay called for the 18 yards of interference. These are not great coverage defensive backs for Detroit. They're more comfortable in zone. And Detroit going with a blitz here, putting Clay and his teammates in tough spot. Backfield and Kenneth Davis. No, he trapped it as the call at the 15. Greg Jeffries uh, was the Lion defender. First miss by Kelly. He's nine for ten. In and through the hands of Kenneth, nicknamed Cotton Davis. I don't think there's anything wrong with Thurman. Just they'll spell those two guys with just three days rest as much as they can. Well, it's been a tough 11 days for Buffalo. Davis. No running room. Yeah, and Swelling went after the quarterback, came in from the backside to help out, and uh, Broderick Thomas in on the stop. Dick, that's what, that's what it looks like when a mortal tries to emulate Barry Sanders. It just doesn't work, except for Barry Sanders. And a very good mortal. At the 20 yard line, third and 11. Thomas back in, he's in the pattern. And the throw is to Copeland for a touchdown. Russell Copeland, his first of the year. And the first of his career. Watch Copeland inside the zone. He threatens the strong safety blades and then breaks out. That's the weakness of the double zone. Excellent job by Buffalo. A little spin of the helmet. It comes up six. Former Memphis State star gets Buffalo on the board, and here's Christie's trying for point. Got him out. 9.53 left in the first half. It's 14-7. Russell Copeland has had a couple of years to think about his first touchdown celebration. <laughs> that was a new one, taking the helmet off and spinning it. Yeah, it came up six. You're right. I mean, very unique. And Kelly, five for six on that drive. 57 yards, the last 20 to Copeland, who was playing because of the Don Beebe concussion. Beebe out since the Jets game uh, three weeks ago. Christie to kick it off to Mel Gray. A low liner as they go to the directional kick, and it works through the end zone, and Gray unable to return. First down at the 20. Probably a pretty good idea. Keep it away from Mel Gray as much as you can. Now it's Craig's turn to go to the air. He's 6 for 8, and Kelly 10 for 11. I, I like that, Craig. You know, the, the comment he made to us, he said, Said I like everything about football, but I, I can tell you this: family and free agency don't mix. But he's got two sons, and dragging his wife around the country to these various spots where he's played is not fun. Fun for him, not fun for the family. He said, "Hey, uh, to be frank, I, I like Detroit, but I wish I had never left Seattle." Yes. I mean, I. But that's uh, sometimes a player doesn't have a choice. Screen it. Uh, 
complete to Eric Lynch, free agent from Grand Valley State. A little too tall. Craig uh, would like to throw this one again. Yeah, good pressure from Darrell Talley, 56, and Jeff Wright, 91, and he had to arch it a little more than he wanted. There is specific timing on those screen passes, and if you can throw it directly to the running back, it makes it work a lot better. These old uniforms, the ones the Lions wore when they uh, beat Dallas down in Irving, Texas. I feel there's a little good luck in there. Wide open Herman Moore. And he gets 10 yards and a foot and a first down. Jeff Burris, Notre Dame rookie on the corner covering for Buffalo. Perfect timing there. That ball thrown before Herman Moore makes the break. Uh, Jeff Burris is in there. Bills were going with the six defensive back set. Likes and prefers to catch the ball with his hands. That's a great lesson for young receivers listening out there. Catch it first with your hands. What a target. 6-3 and he can high jump 7-3. And then soft hands and good speed to boot. Here's a number one pick three years ago. Sanders. Almost as Jeez. if somebody had him by the shirt tail yeah. and yanking him back on that move, and he gets a hard-earned one. We'll have to give an assist on the tackle to Dave Craig. They bumped shoulders, and that slowed Barry Sanders down. Watch the handoff here. And they kind of crash into each other. That definitely will slow your momentum. But Bruce Smith makes the tackle, looks fine. Not 100%, but looks fine enough to play. Now Buffalo will have some extra rest before... Uh, they have to go to work again their next game at Miami December 4th. Craig then he has a wide open receiver again the tight end run. Oh! He fumbles! Oh, and it goes out of bounds no. and Detroit will retain possession. It hit the sidelines and if it did there was never possession by Buffalo. That would mean Detroit would have to keep the ball. Nick, I'm not sure that ball went out of bounds. Well, that'll be the key, and that's what they're talking about. If it hit the sidelines after the Buffalo player touched forward, muffed out of bounds, it'll belong to the offensive team back at the spot of the fumble. Nick, I think that's a very fortunate call for Detroit. Well, let's see if it hit the sidelines. Tally knocks it out of the arms of Ron Hall. Intentional. And it looks like Matt Darby. Yeah, you're right. You called it. It's those Michigan apple picking <laughs> eyes. Keeps that doctor away, you know. Yeah, you can see the right ones. So a break for the Lions there. They get it at the 48-yard line of first down. It's a 17-yard gain to the tight end, Ron Hall. Barry Sanders running room. And tackled by Mickey Washington in the open field at the 42. Boy, you can almost feel the heartbeats accelerate on that defense Absolutely. when they see Sanders lugging the ball. And, of course, uh, running to that side of the field right at you in your living room, right there on the couch, you're running right at Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator. Walt saying, get out there, get out there. Somebody like, get on it, get on it. And Mickey Washington does. Good job by Washington, but Sanders gets nine more. Second and one. caught as he takes the handoff. I'm not sure he made the first down as Marcus Patton penetrated. See the Lions wearing that number 50 on their helmets for a former teammate, Toby Castan, a linebacker and a special team star who was fatally injured in an auto accident in Texas in October. This team has had its share of tragedies oh, in the last my. half dozen years, hasn't it? Mm, too many. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Ronnie Lott. After seeing Lott and go down twice with tackles and possible neck injuries, and yeah, I hope that great player thinks about retirement soon. They get the first down as they go to the to the beef. Derek Moore, who played at Northeastern State of Oklahoma. In Cherokee country said we were the red men and we wore green uniforms. He said, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> don't, I, don't look at me, Dick. I don't know the answer. You know, I, you're lying about Ronnie Lott. I, I mean, I know a lot of people care for Ronnie Lott, but uh, 
he'd fit fine in a lot of broadcast booths and at some point or I know coaching he's told or anything he'll do it sure. I mean, he'll be a terrific success no matter what yeah but that uh, the punishment of all those tackles and the <laughs> neck injury I do, I worry for him Craig off play action come back Perriman can't hang on Washington the cover man good pressure that time by the Buffalo defense and uh, Jeff right up in uh, Dave Craig's face. 550 left. First half, 147 Detroit. Been a good half for Craig since taking over Scott. For Scott Mitchell, Craig has six touchdowns and no interceptions. Uh, they call him the old man here, too. Well, he's 36. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't mind it, you know. He's still living a dream. Was wearing his Milton Wildcats ball cap. And we Proud of it, too. Bruce Smith and not only Smith, Daryl Talley gets Sanders, and that's a rare time when you get Sanders for that kind of loss. Daryl was almost there to take the handoff. He comes right through the gap. Nobody touches him. And if you come late, you've already got the blocking scheme set up. Barry sees him. Dave Craig does not. Barry puts both hands on the football to make sure there's no fumble. It's a very smart play by both Daryl Tell. Good call by Walt Corey on the blitz. Tally 200 consecutive games at linebacker. What a performer. And there's the defensive coordinator, Corey. And that's his Thanksgiving swizzle stick, too. Is Turkey flavor. Different. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you'll gobble those up throughout the day, won't he? The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Acura. Some things are worth the price. A reminder on this uh, Thanksgiving uh, evening to stay tuned. A tremendous com comedy hit, a new holiday tradition. Macaulay Culkin stars in Home Alone. And uh, then Jerry Seinfeld salutes one of the greatest comedy teams of all time, Abbott and Costello. And who'll ever forget that who's on first routine of theirs? That'll be part of the show tonight. So stay with us starting at 8, 7 Central on NBC. Third down and 16 for the Lions. And uh, Phil and records the first sack of the game as Craig unable to search out a receiver. Got around David Lutz. Hansen on the outside, Lutz. Well, oh, that's a nice move by Hansen. He just almost hopped over the shoulder of David Lutz for the first sack. And it's his fourth of this season out of North Dakota State. Oaks, North Dakota, population 2,000. You go to Fargo, 120 miles for entertainment. Greg Montgomery, an end over end. Jeff Burris, running room. Flag is down. Burris at the 22, bites the turf. And that's an unusual uh, spot yes. for a flag to be thrown. It was uh, very early in the play. Derek Moore made the tackle. There was a flag early and a flag late. See Scott Kowalkowski, who played at Notre Dame in the picture. His dad, that's part of a tradition. His mother works in the business office here with the Lions, and dad was a player for many, many seasons, an offensive lineman. Uh, legacies work in most businesses except the NFL. You do have to play. <laughs> <laughs> His dad was an offensive guard 11 years from 66 through 76. And his mom, Judy, uh, works for the Lions. I don't know if she uh, is involved in writing the uh, checks, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Scott's a character and a good special teams player, apparently, according to the Lions. Trying to sort this one out for Wayne Fonts and Marv Levy. <laughs> These PA had... Uh, the way the sophistication of the videos and the sound effects and on this day as the officials were huddling they played a little uh, gobble gobble turkey uh, <laughs> sound. Well, well this is like one of the biggest living rooms I've ever been in. Pretty comfortable seating. <laughs> the only thing they don't have in here is a fireplace. 80,000 plus uh, the Lions and there are three fouls on the play holding on 21 of the kicking team. That's one. That's on Buffalo. Or on uh, Detroit, rather. Detroit, rather. That's on. We have holding 
on the receiving team, number 94, That's which is the furthest foul. We also have holding on the receiving team at the line of scrimmage. Still a post-possession foul. We'll take the worst penalty against the receiving team. And now let's go down to Hannah Storm. Of the foul. <laughs> well, at least well, you go ahead and explain that, Bob. Oh, I'm just happy there were no indictments. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that holding will do it every time, won't it? Only three on that play. Marv Levy says, wait a minute, Cole College, when I was studying, gave that five beta kappa. I don't remember ever hearing that combination. What's this furthest foul stuff he's saying? It does not affect possession. And Jim Kelly and the Bills trailing 14 to 7 are on the field. Still talking about it, Dick. I mean, every... I think it's a matter now. Where do they spot the ball after whatever uh, penalty is enforced? You know, that's uh, one of the interesting aspects of this game is the Oklahoma State production of the runners today, Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders. We thought it'd be fun to rate them with the other colleges sending great runners to the NFL. That's the NFL yardage, and O.J. Simpson, Marcus Allen, Southern California wins it with Jim Brown and Larry Zonka immediately behind. Uh, pretty good tandem. Yeah, uh, really. These two guys play together, Eric Dickerson and Craig James. You know who I'd take? All right, who would you take out of that? I group? would take Simpson and Allen for one reason. Why? Because Allen would block for Simpson. Well, wait a minute. You think Zonka wouldn't no, block for I, Jim Brown? No, no. You, you'd need more than one football oh, on your side. You're liable to run into Zonka on a flight someday. Yeah, he wouldn't block I've for Brown. I've seen Zonka. I can outrun him now. <laughs> I can outrun him. Pretty good name. Penn State with Franco Harris and Kurt Warner and Walter Payton. Lewis Tillman, that number will go up. But today, it's Thomas with 11 yards and Sanders with 39 and a score. Now, Barry was two years behind Thurman. So he was kind of uh, Thurman Thomas's understudy. He was recruited to. Uh, Thurman was. Wait a minute. Change of possession. The receiving team will get to keep the ball after penalizing them for their penalty. The further spot of their penalty on a post-possession post foul was where the receiving team received the kick. Will penalize from there. First down. Film at 11. What has happened? Basically, the two early holding fouls at the line of scrimmage negate one another, and then they penalize Buffalo from the spot where the ball was caught by Burris, half the distance to the goal for their well holding. Done. Well done. Now and I they understand. start just across the 10. With 4.40 left, and the Bills trying to muster a long drive to tie before the half. Thurman Thomas. And the one likeness of Thomas and Sanders and Levy, Marv Levy pointed that out last night. Such incredible balance. Yes. And that they often will run up into a pile against their own blockers and bounce. Not off tacklers, but their own blockers. Draw that crowd. And how many times have we seen yeah. Thomas get a big gain out of that? I think they're both fearless, too. Kelly drills the ball. And a first down catch by the touchdown maker, Russell Copeland. Uh, this is the defense now that people around the country hate, especially when it's your team. It's happening to the dreaded prevent keep all the receivers in front of you hope the clock uh, each time up you'll set you'll give them a field goal but they're playing very soft Detroit now Ryan McNeil made the tackle after 11 yard game now it's Andre Reed wrestled down by McNeil shy of the first down by a yard fourth catch for Reed today he has uh, 72 now on the year he's the leading at this point Receiver in the AFC catches and yards. That's uh, Herb Patera, the defensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions, on the field. There are five defensive backs, make it six defensive backs for the Detroit Lions in the game. Uh oh, Thomas covers his own fumble at the 29. Might have taken his eye off things to see where the hole was developing. So from second and one, Buffalo now has third and almost five. Well, in a simple handoff, that's on Jim Kelly. That's not on Thurman Thomas. Jim Kelly put that thing right up above his, on his shoulder pads. The quarterback's responsibility is stick it right there in the sternum. 
Well, Kelly goes to the throw, and Reed almost <laughs> shaking <laughs> loose <laughs> from Ryan McNeil. That could have been a long, long game. And Detroit taking a chance with a blitz again. McNeil out there in man-to-man -man coverage, and Andre Reed would love to play anybody man-to-man -man every week for the rest of his career. He'd eat him alive. And Kelly doesn't mind the blitz, uh, well, unless it's the Steelers. It's the, this is true. He said he still can't believe that was only 11 guys on the field <laughs> that he played against. Thomas on first down picks up three plus. Mike Johnson and Greg Jeffries on the stop. As we approach the two minute warning, 214 on the clock. And Kelly might just hurry him up and try to get another play. Wanted to go long left and Stad throws. Thomas saves the loss as number 94 Kelvin Pritchett was in on the sack and uh, Kelly goes down. They're at the two minutes timeout. We'll check on the injury to Jim Kelly when we return. Back at the Silverdome, Frank Reich hurriedly warming up and goes in for Jim Kelly. And Kelly uh, not showing any limp as he leaves the field. Well, hard to see here exactly what happens, but Pritchett 94 gets him on the ground. When Jim goes down, there doesn't seem to be any contact. And then when he starts to get up, he kind of grabs his side or something. You know, I, I don't, that looks like a cramp. The reaction you have to a cramp. I really don't know, but on three days rest, <laughs> in here, this is not an air-conditioned dome. It's not a heated dome. Anything can happen. He looks fine. Well, they had that Monday night game against Pittsburgh. Then they come home and beat Green Bay Sunday. Then a Thursday here in Detroit. 11 days, three games, uh, and it's not a young team. No, it's not. Right, the super sub, the unflappable, but he gets nailed. Kelvin Pritchett and uh, number 51, Broderick Thomas. Uncle Toivo here to cheer the Lions. Yeah. Good pressure, you see, swelling inside, inside here, a lot of pressure. Detroit gets up in the gaps. Pritchett finally breaks loose of the pass protector. Davis, 65. Frank had to hold that ball for a long time, Vic. That was the. Uh, Minute 35 left. Uh, Mel Gray at the other end, and the Lions will have another chance. Chris Moore. Dying spiral. Fair catch. Gray at the 33 yard line. 35 yard punt. No return. A reminder that coming up, it's the Domino's Pizza NFL Live halftime report. Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, and Joe Gibbs on tap. A couple of live interviews. We'll hear from Miami head coach Don Shula. And a live visit as well from the Boomer Esiason home. Knowing uh, Norman Esiason and a lot of folks there. He loves to entertain. And it'll be an entertaining chat, I'm sure, as he'll be with his son, Gunner, and daughter, Sydney. Uh, Boomer, the more the merrier. Drives his wife crazy. Sometimes she doesn't know who's invited to the house. She may plan for 12 and 25 show up. <laughs> Bruised back is the report on Jim Kelly, and he will return. But meanwhile, Dave Craig and the Lions looking for more points. And he goes long for more. And Herman Moore to the 32 plus a penalty. Jeff Burris riding him down. 35 yard play to go with the 51 yard touchdown catch earlier. Face mask, five yards. Number 22, the defensive team on the tackle. Five yards from the end of the run, first down. This pattern is executed at the line of scrimmage. That first move around Jeff Burris, a veteran taking advantage of a rookie. There's the face mask, the right hand. Craig again puts it right over Moore's shoulder. Those Velcro hands, big pick up the truck. Oh, Moore's over 100 yards on his four catches today. And uh, Craig said, let's rehuddle. 1.15 uh, showing on the clock. No timeout was taken. Uh, I think that Detroit's found something here in the sixth defensive back set that Buffalo has. You, again, you have Herman Moore on Jeff Burris. Burris is going to be a great cornerback in this league. 
But he is a young one. Clock didn't start. Schofield, Wisconsin, old man Dave Craig, three times a pro bowler when he was throwing to Steve Larson in Seattle. It's Aubrey Matthews with a minute five left in the half, and Detroit pads the lead. Hanson adds the extra point. It's 21-7, and for Craig, 10 for 14 and 206 yard half and two scores. Uh, the closer, here's Aubrey Matthews. He's going to run this pattern. He is dropped by this gentleman right here. And the closest man to Aubrey Matthews at, when this ball is thrown is the drum major at for the halftime band. I mean, there's nobody there. Complete drop coverage by the Buffalo Bills. That's two easy scores. Craig again, great presence in the pocket. Still can put something on the football. And Matthews, those are the hardest ones to catch. You know nobody's around you. His second of the season. And Wayne Fonts. Well, he has his critics here in Detroit and throughout the state. The players love this yes. man. He's a terrific uh, players coach. And Jim Kelly denied uh, in his possession and we'll see whether or not uh, he'll be on the field when Buffalo gets the ball. Well, he didn't start the clock at 115. Might have helped Buffalo because they still have a minute five left and timeout situation. Buffalo has all three. Russell Copeland and Yonel Jordan are back. Copeland and Hanson to kick it off. Don't call me babyface. He said, I'm going to come back in my next life looking like Chris Spielman. <laughs> <laughs> he hits, hits a long one. It's Jordan, first year man from Southern Illinois with running room. And Robert Massey able to get him down at the 41. Good return by Jordan, who Grew up in Evanston, Illinois, was born in Haiti. Sunday, NBC Sports has a terrific doubleheader for you. Starts at 12.30 with NFL Live, and here are the game's primary game. Miami and the Jets. Ooh. Oh, AFC East, a blockbuster there. And then the late big one, Pittsburgh Ooh. and the Raiders. So teams that are battling with all the shuffling, and it's wide open coming down the stretch. Kelly. He gets the ball into Thurman Thomas as Spielman makes the tackle. Clock running 45 seconds. Now Buffalo in that hurry, hurry up offense. They've got three timeouts. Kelly elects not to use one, so spending a lot of time here. Underneath the read, good tackle made by Greg Jeffries. And timeout spent his first. 27 seconds left. Let's go back to the games on Sunday, Bob. And uh, yeah, just as on the AFC side, especially, there's just no clear sailing uh, favorite at this point. Yeah, the Jets, their win last week, the manner in which they did it, got to be sky high. The one I wonder about is Pittsburgh versus the Raiders. Uh, Hostetler has not been protected well this year by his teammates. And you know that Dom Capers of Pittsburgh will turn that defense loose. Corner blitzes, safety blitzes. I, I hope that Jeff Hostetler remains in the uh, huddle for the entire game, but that quarterback for the Raiders is in jeopardy. Yeah, but the Raiders, written off by some with their slow start this year, are back in the running. And with a victory against Pittsburgh, uh, they're very much a factor out in the West. And you see Kansas City will be up at Seattle. New fans in Denver will see the improved young Bengals at mile high. Houston at Cleveland, part of a rivalry. 
tell you one thing about the Raiders. Chester McLaughlin, that defensive tackle for him. You for love him. Oh, man. Give me 12 of him. Kelly, 15 for 17, has the ball in Detroit territory at the 48. And it's Pritchett again. Two sacks for Kelvin Pritchett, plus the hit on Kelly. Who's trying to block him? Timeout. Buffalo, 22 seconds left. Pritchett from Mississippi. Well, you know what Detroit is? Here's Pritchett. Detroit is getting that middle pressure that Wayne Fox was complaining they were not getting. This is a game, a little twist between 91, Porsche, and Pritchett. And generally speaking, the Buffalo offensive line handles twists like that very well. But they got the twister, the guy who's supposed to get the sack, the guy behind him. But the big heavy guy split the guard in the center and makes the sack. Now Pritchett in 11 games had two sacks, and he has two in the first half today. Uh, there's a sign of his toughness. Look at that left bicep. There, there's a fraternity. See, they, they brand you to get in that fraternity. That's the, I want no part of that fraternity. That's just one of those uh, hot coat hangers, is yep, it? Yep, that's... Woo, those are I, definitely <laughs> defensive players. You mean you didn't belong to one no, of those no, no, at all no, those no, schools no. you attended? No, not at Utah? No, 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 no. Not at Glendale City College? Junior College. Not at Illinois? No, 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 no branding. We did it on animals that had a, a leg on each corner. That's all. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills now, uh, to use the uh, adjective of the day, in a desperate situation at the 44 time running out and trailing by two touchdowns. Wonder who the Jets in Miami are rooting for today. Let's guess. Kelly in trouble again. Is it Pritchett? Yes! He's got the hat trick. Well, he took this kind of beating against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they got him with blitzes. Now, Corbin Lacina is out, but Jerry Krafts is taking Lacina's place. Generally speaking, this is a good pass. No, he just gets by John Davis, 65. A bull rush over John Davis, 65. Well, it's appropriate. This is bowling country, Michigan. Three is a turkey, isn't it? It is a turkey. Happy Thanksgiving, Kelvin. And now let's go to Great Gumball in New York. It's the Domino's Pizza NFL Live NFL Halftime NFL Report. And we welcome you back. Second half, 21-7 Detroit. Significant 20 points for the Lions. They're averaging only 19 this season. But when they score 20, they've won 12 of their last 14. So number 20 is a very significant uh, digit for the Lions and their fans. Barry Sanders, and he's on course to rush for over 20. As Hansen sends it down to the Bills, a trail by 14. And it's Jordan who takes it across the 30 to the 32-yard line. A look at the Coors Light halftime statistics. Uh, Dick, among other things, to confirm what uh, Mike Ditka was saying at halftime, Bills with just 23 yards rushing, not enough. The 201 yards passing for the, the Lions, an excellent half by Dave Craig. But then if you look at the... The passing yards by Jim Kelly, he was 15 of 17 in the first half. I mean, a quarterback can't play much better than that. But the two big plays, the two big scoring plays for Detroit. They suggest joining us, Bruce Smith, although injured, did start and played first half. Thurman Thomas gets the call on first down out to the 38-yard line. Let's go down to Hannah Storm. Well, Dick, Wayne Fox told me the key play of the game was the second play of the game, the flea flicker. That was originally they were supposed to open the game with that. They'd worked on it all week because of the way that the safety was positioned. However, they had to audible out of it. He said that was key in establishing their confidence, confidence to get the touchdown there. And in the second half, even if they maintained this lead, they still plan to go with the play action passing, stick with the game plan and not run the ball any more than they did in the first. Dick. That surprise you, Bob? No, it doesn't because the play action starts with Jerry Sanders' ability to run the football. Encroachment 93. Now you can hear the officials say that Mark Spindler, 93, was encroaching, and that'll give Buffalo nearly a first down. Encroachment, 93 defense, five yards, it'll be a first down. Enough for the first down. So, Jim Kelly, how do you feel at halftime when you've only missed on two passes 
One for a touchdown, yes. and you're trailing by two scores. I was just a flea flicker. Second play of the game, the open receiver, Aubrey Matthews. Two big plays made by Detroit. No big plays made by the Buffalo Bills. Thomas on first down into a pile of Lions. And Robert Orche from South Carolina State leading the charge. Uh, Dick, this is interesting. They start the game in the hurry up. Now they go back in the huddle. Down 21 to 7. They're being more deliberate. Second down and eight. Thomas now only 22 yards rushing on 10 tries. Oh, well, we got an injury, a man down there on a knee. Robert Porsche, who made that last tackle, slow getting up. Well, it's a time, Bob, this, with these injuries, it reminds you that along with being talented at this stage of the year, you need talent before you need the injury luck going down the oh, stretch. Oh, man. And at this stage in the season, and again, playing with just three days complete rest, to play on Thursday, there are some aches and pains and some pulled muscles that you just have to play through. Bruce Smith is proving that today with that bruised shoulder, knowing the significance of this game. He's trying to contribute any way he can. He hasn't had the general effect that Bruce Smith has, but he is out there. Well, Dan Owens, number 90, replacing Porsche, second and eight. Hit from uh, the side. And number 59, Mike Johnson making the stop. Uh, this is the counter. Guard tackle pull, craps leads. Fina 70 up through the hole. Thurman Thomas probably the best back in the league presently at running the counter. It's Buffalo's featured play. And there, it, it appears to me that what they're trying to do is get Thurman Thomas into the game because he is so much a part of their success. At least carried it or been... Uh, Involved in all three plays. It's third down and a yard and a half. And Carwell Gardner, the big fullback, stopped at the line of scrimmage. No game. Ryan McNeil, 47, came up to help out after Mike Johnson had stuffed the run. I think Marv's already made his decision to go for it here. Uh, he is in charge of short yardage and goal line. He's got that little card in his hand. Those are the plays he calls. And the head coach has already made the decision. How about that? 12, 10 to go. In the third quarter at the Lions 48 yard line. And uh, Buffalo, one of the worst in the league, three for 11 on fourth down conversions. And Kelly calls time. Well, this is a time not to make uh, any mistakes, take any chances. He wants to be sure of the call. So we'll pause for these words. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Dodge. The more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. By Domino's Pizza. Call now and ask for our football special. It's got to be Domino's. And by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. Mm, it is a day for the young to dream and the old to remember. 21 to 7 and Marv Levy gambles at the Lion 48 on fourth and two. Thurman leaping for a first down and more to the 42 of the Lions. Mike Johnson trips him up. Well, the Lions' reputation of not stopping opponents on third down conversions playing into that decision, fourth down. Yeah, no question. Last week, uh, Bears converted 13 of 18 third downs and one of one on fourth downs kept the ball for 44 minutes and Herb Patera, the defensive coordinator, that's a stat he'd like to burn. Off play action to Thomas. Andre Reed. Ryan McNeil makes the hit. Reed now with seven catches, so that's 22 for Reed in the last two games. He's fit, number one. James Lofton helped him, helped him with his offseason training. Runs downhill is a tremendous weightlifter. N doesn't look big when you see him just in street clothes, but this kid is put together. Former high school quarterback in Allentown, PA. Thomas. To 
at the 31 yard line. Spielman with a stop. Well, it, Buffalo has certainly placed a great deal of importance on this first drive, treating it like the opening drive of the game, Dick, not the opening drive of the second half when you're down 21 7. If they can score here with a touchdown, they're right back in a football game. And that's why I think Buffalo has gone back to the huddle, slowed things down, been a little more deliberate, given them a better chance. Another first down to the 30 yard line and chewing up time, much uh, the way the Bears did last Sunday in Chicago. Kelly throws it away. Now, now Detroit getting a little impatient here. I think I saw a safety blitz. See if this guy right here doesn't try to get to the quarterback. It's a safety. And they they want to. This is a, a blitz to stop momentum. It's an incomplete pass, so it works. Well, that's a safety blitz from Lapeer. <laughs> is that a long way from here? Utica, yeah. <laughs> Rochester, Yates Cider Mill over there. Andre Reed limps off. Seven catches, 55 yards for him. Second and ten. Opening drive of the second half already has uh, consumed five minutes. So they go to Yonel Jourdain and he is to the 28 yard line. Give him three and it's second and seven. Pritchett and Porsche make the stop. And here comes Andre Reed. Said he uh, went to Cootstown uh, Division II school in Pennsylvania and uh, fourth round pick in 85. And where's was the 85th pick in 85? And has become the seventh best receiver all time in the NFL. Well, he came out with some big names Al Toon, Eddie Brown. Good protection going long for the tight end. Metzelars, touchdown. Just when you think he can't go deep with Metzelars, who doesn't have the speed of the young guys at that position like Ben Coates. They find it. His fourth touchdown catch of the year. That is Mike Johnson, 59, linebacker coverage on Metzelars. Great catch by Pete and perfectly thrown by Jim Kelly. Just absolutely on target. 27 yard score, and it's the Bills trying to go 21 to 14 on this extra point by Steve Christie. Whoa, we just did slide that in. 21 14. Kellen Winslow beat out Bob Trumpy for that old time <laughs> team. And Pete Metzlar is the tight end at the moment for the Buffalo Bills with that touchdown catch perfectly aimed by Jim Kelly. Five minute 44 second drive. That's a long drive for Buffalo. Yes, it is. They. Bounce one to Gray. And Steve Tasker makes the tackle at the 20-yard line, trying to take the rhythm out of those kick returns by not just sending them high to Gray. Saturday night, this is a movie that uh, will get you a little teary-eyed. My girl, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Home Alone's Macaulay Culkin star, network television premiere, My Girl, Mark it down, the whole family, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central and gather the family uh, to watch a tribute to the TV families that make you laugh. 40 years of the funniest moments from your favorite TV family. Sounds like a fun night Saturday on NBC. Dave Craig having a superb game. Barry Sanders. 22 men on the field and about 18 of them were within uh, uh, five yards of Barry Sanders. And all on their feet. The Buffalo Bill defensive linemen staying on their feet so they can pursue with Barry Sanders. Basically not giving him any place to cut back. That's not by accident. One yard gain. What is the whole scheme for Sanders? It doesn't look as if the Lions have specific. No. You got to run between guard and tackle. It will make the hole off uh, center yeah, and guard. That doesn't work. It's senseless to give him a spot to run to because he doesn't know where he's running to. He just reads helmets. Fake to Sanders. Craig drills it to Moore. 
And the lanky Herman Moore with another big catch and the Lions first down. Buffalo has not been able to control the Lions top target Herman Moore. Uh, again an excellent pattern run but there's space between the linebackers and the defensive backs because of threat of Barry. He uh, sticks his hands out there and catches it. I'm telling you you don't get to see Herman Moore on national television a lot. But when you do his pass catching skills are absolutely astounding. Currently tied with Jerry Rice for the NFL lead 10 touchdowns. They pick up Goganius on the blitz the throw to the tight end Ron Hall. same time and Hall with discerning judgment to take the ball and not the helmet and head up field <laughs> but a flag is down <laughs> defensive pass interference number 20 decline pass was caught first down Dick, uh, didn't I used to see metal arc lemon do this <laughs> with a basketball this is beautifully done concentration traps it on the back of the Jones I mean, Jones said, wow, I got the penalty. Yeah, what, what did, did I, I do? do? That happened before the catch. So Ron Hall acquired by the Lions from Tampa Bay makes a fine reception. Sanders trying to cut back. Now that's the play where Bruce Smith did his job and tally right behind him. It, and there's two veterans not going too far. Had they taken one more step to the right, Sanders would have had an open field this side. And you see both 75, Lomas Brown, and Halleck, 49, trying to cut off these guys. So there is a cutback for Barry Sanders, and Smith takes the hard inside move and is there to just trip him up. That had a 44-yard touchdown written on it the way it developed. you got to keep giving it to Barry Sanders because the next one might be. He has 41 yards rushing today, 14 carries. Greg underneath. And to the 40-yard line to Brett Perriman, who played at Miami of Florida with quite a crew, Michael Irvin being one of the other wide receivers. Yeah, his teammates uh, at the University of Miami, pretty famous guys. He caught the ball from Kosar, from Testa Verde, from Steve Walsh. Said that uh, he didn't like uh, the hard work from Jimmy Johnson, but he said Jimmy Johnson was always fair. But never worked harder than for my own mom. Yeah, that's true, too. But you got to tell that story. And the 40 on third down, Sanders caught in the backfield. Hanging on was Mickey Washington until help arrived and Kurt Schultz with the assist. And the Lions will have to punt. I see Buffalo is committing another guy now to stopping Barry Sanders at the line of scrimmage. Schultz is, or Mickey Washington is out here watching. It's a corner blitz. So Schultz comes 24. I mean, they're trying to keep him in there so the pursuit can catch him. So Montgomery to punt for the Lions. Jeff Burris at the Bills 10. Let's it go. And this foot was in the end zone, I believe. No signal yet. He touched it while his foot was down, so Buffalo gets it at the 20. And we have a timeout, 505 left in the third. On the sidelines, Bruce Smith and Daryl Talley looking at the faxes of the Lions offense that they study. And last week when he didn't play, he said, I, I felt I contributed. That I saw some things and helped him with some uh, stunt moves. Off the screen, Clement Thomas, a gain of five. Chris Spielman, 54, who studies films, he said it's a ritual. Two hours and a quarter every morning, beginning at 6.15, another hour at night. He said, I live this game. I love this game. I'm going to stay in the game. I'm going to coach it. I'll give back every way I can. He said, it's just, uh, I know sometimes my family hates me because that's all I think about. But it's true. It's, uh, he was born the son of a coach, and his dad is still coaching semi-pro ball in Canton, Ohio. Carwell Gardner running over Lions out to the 39-yard line, a first down. Now, this is the danger that Detroit faced. Eventually, when uh, Buffalo slows down its offense, collects its thoughts, 
after each play that they could punish the defensive line of the Detroit Lions and it's happening. Gardner who does not get a lot of carries. You set your defense to stop Thurman Thomas. Generally he's just a blocker or a decoy. And the 232 pounder picks up 13. 21 14 Detroit leading Buffalo final minutes of the third quarter. Oh, what a little move. That's a Sanderesque yes, it is. effort by Thurman Thomas to the 42. It was either Spindler, 93, or 51, Broderick Thomas, who misses. 51 comes inside. Carwell Gardner gets him. Spindler, 93, the nose tackle that Thurman Thomas just freezes and gets back up inside. Gain of uh, almost four when it looked as if he'd be nailed for a loss. Thurman Thomas up close to Barry Sanders in yardage. He has 42, and Sanders has only 37. And here goes Thurman again. Close to a first down at the 49-yard line. Now, one of the problems that the uh, Lions face, these are starters from last year for the Detroit Lions, and now all these guys, five of these six guys, are starting for other teams in the NFL. Uh, the two linebackers, Gibson and Jamison, doing an excellent job. This is why this defense is not really set yet. They're still trying to adjust this defense, and Herb Patera knows that he's got a, a light front. They're not very big, and teams are pushing that defensive front around. In the free agency, they not only lost five players, they all are starters. That underlines that they were good players leaving Detroit. Thomas! They caught the Lions in a blitz, and Thomas out to the 41-yard line of the Lions, and that'll be a yard shy of another Buffalo first down. They're starting to grind it out. Should be coming right at you. Watch the block by Carwell Gardner on the line of scrimmage. He goes down and gets Chris Spielman. You'll see Spielman jump inside right there. That's the key block. Well, that is just a nice power play run by the Buffalo Bills. Gaining confidence here, Dick. And Thomas giving a breather as... They don't go to Kenneth Davis. They use Yanel Jourdain. They carried only four times all year prior to today. But it's Gardner. And again, the first man can't bring him down. He spins to a first down at the 40. Attendance today at the Silver Dome, 79,732. 75,000 plus here to cheer the Lion. Great fans this part of the country, as is the case over West New York, where they cheer the Bills. Yeah, they, you know. They haven't had a lot of winning teams since the great years of the 50s, but they still come out and cheer the yeah. Lions. Lions fans now care. I mean, if nothing else, that Wayne Fonts has done that. Jordan on the sweep. And the Lions do a good job of stretching it, and the flag is down. And when they keep the ball, as Buffalo is doing now, Barry Sanders can't play. And the Bears did it just to the absolute nth degree at Soldier Field last week. Uh, it was ridiculous. And you look at that, 15 carries, 37 yards for Sanders. Here's a man averaging 5-7. I mean, the closest in the NFL Holy is 4-8. Offense, number 88, 10 yards, repeat first down. Averaging 2.5 today. So the Bills defensive structure, Mr. Corey, has uh, been very effective so far. Now, Pete Metzlars was on the hold, and you're right. It, Barry Sanders does not want to sit the second half of another game out. Uh, last week in the uh, first quarter, they ran six plays against the Bears. They ran three plays in the third quarter against the Bears. Total him over. Well, after the penalty, it's Jordan. And he... Gets to the 41, gets almost the 10 yards back on the penalty before Johnson and Spielman collaborate on the stop. Final seconds of the third period. Uh, Jordan has great acceleration. Nice long stride. The former Saluki at Southern Illinois on the Bills practice squad a year ago and emerging as a contributor this season. Not drafted. Thurman cooling off. We'll see him in the fourth. 13 seconds left in the quarter. Kelly's not going to get it off. Delay a game. So two seconds left in the period. 
but a five-yard penalty will be imposed against the Bills. Prior to the snap, delay on the offensive team. Five yards, still second down. Well, the penalty bug bites Buffalo. First a 10-yard offensive hold, and now delay of game, second and 16. And now they run the clock. That's the end of the period. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Ball control by the Bills in the third period to cut the lead to 21-14. And another drive of five minutes plus engineered by Kelly, who looks at second and 16 after the two penalties at the Lions, 46. Right down from our overhead camera. You see the blocking gaps by the Bills. Thomas with a terrific catch, and then Spielman wrestles him to the turf at the 38. Pat Swilling put pressure on Jim Kelly if Thurman Thomas catches that ball in stride. He's got another 10 or 15 yards on it, Dick. Detroit lucky there. And Detroit's choice here, they basically have two defensive linemen, four linebackers, and five defensive backs. Porsche and Owens, the only lineman. Yeah. Third down. Wide open, and that'll be good for the first down. Russell Copeland, who had his first career touchdown earlier today. Robert Massey on the coverage, and the Bills have another four downs. Uh, comes from the right again. Massey with a big cushion. Kelly looks inside. Uh, that's that's stealing. I mean, when you've got that big a cushion, Massey is very upset at himself. But uh, now they put the pressure guys back in. Spindler is back in. And a three-man rush now, a three-man defensive front. Kelly with a terrific game, 20 for 23. Thomas on the toss, and Pat Swilling, number 56. Can't help but think of Joe Schmidt with that number. The Lions don't retire numbers of their great stars, although some aren't doled out. But Swilling has old Joe Schmidt's number. Bites through the block by Carwell Gardner, 35, and then still has that closing speed. Pat Swilling does, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL has seen in a long, long time. And he had to be a good one, a pro bowler, to get those that five and six on yeah. a blue uniform. Ed, Detroit gave Barry Sanders, Lem Barney's number, and Billy Sims' number, number 20. Great reverence for that number. Second and long. Thomas and wrapped up by 59, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson, who played so many years in Cleveland, and he and Bruce Smith were close buddies. Uh, Mike Johnson was an architecture major at Virginia Tech. He likes to uh, redesign old houses, redo old houses. He was an academic All-America there. Where's Andre Reed? I'd look for Andre Reed here, Dick. Third and 14. The blitz. Intercepted by Willie Clay at the three-yard line. Reed, the intended receiver, and Kelly had to hope Reed could out fight for it. But he was about to hit, hit the deck as Johnson was right in his face. You're going to see a lot of pressure on Jim Kelly. Kelly recognizes it, audibilizes the play. But you also see Milton Mack come from the outside. 59, Mike Johnson. Kelly couldn't set up. Excuse me, Greg Jeffries, 25. There you see the pressure. He just puts it up. Play makes the interception. Intended for Andre Reed. First down, Detroit. Willie Clay, who set a Georgia Tech record with 16 career thefts, has his first as a pro. Looks like he's going for a rebound here. Nice catch. Well, that's appropriate. His uncle Dwight was a star basketball player at Notre Dame and part of the college basketball history. Barry 
Sanders, maybe a yard just to complete that thought. Dwight Clay called him the Iceman at Notre Dame, was the man who made the shot that snapped the 88 game UCLA winning streak. Now, how would you know that? Uh, Willie reminded me. He was trying to tell me that he could play too, but his teammates started to laugh too hard. Uh huh. He said that Uncle Dwight is a stockbroker in Pittsburgh, PA, watching today. Probably got highlights of that particular shot in that particular game, too, didn't he? Second down and nine. Will the pyramid. And it'll be a first down at the 15. Seems that Craig can get 10 yards anytime he wants it with a throw. Backside of the zone. Perriman again runs just a hitch. Should see his helmet go through the bottom of the screen. No, he's already gone. Nice setup and throw by Dave Craig. And Mickey Washington makes the catch, uh, makes the tackle. Big family, seven brothers. He said none of us could outrun mom down there in <laughs> Liberty City in Miami. So he put moves on. He said I had to learn some. My, that's why I picked up my moves so I wouldn't get caught by mom. Oh, and now to Herman Moore. Just like suction cups. More, what a day. 36 more. He started the second play of the day with a 51 yard touchdown on the flea flicker. He has 155 big ones. This is a nice move on Thomas Smith. Watch him go inside, fake the hitch. Now that's the right thing to do. He jumps outside the defender because then the quarterback has got a, a, an option. He can either throw it out of bounds or your guy catches it. A beautiful executed pattern by Herman Moore, thrown well by Dave Craig. And Craig working with his receivers, you would think that he's been throwing all season long, not just the last couple of games. Oh, and a fumble, and Craig able to cover it himself with Cornelius Bennett right there, too. You know, we, we saw Dave Craig practicing with, the, with Moore and also Perriman into the end zone, that fade route yesterday at practice a lot. And uh, Moore was saying, no, I want it higher. No, I want it more outside. Craig was putting it right on the money. I, I mentioned to him, I said, man, you're throwing well. He said, well, you got to remember, last couple of years I haven't played much. My arm is fresh. He was behind Joe Montana, set uh, through the preseason, the first part of the season behind Scott Mitchell. He said, my arm is fresh. Going it today. Second down at the 49 of Buffalo. Out of the backfield. Now it's a tight end run Hall this time. Not a first down, but good yardage to the Buffalo 42. Tally the tackle. Uh, Halleck's going to come all the way, excuse me, Hall's going to come all the way across the formation. Daryl Tally a little late in picking up the fact that he's releasing. Again, a fine throw by Dave Craig. Hall, who uh, went to Hawaii after playing his freshman year at Cal Poly Pomona for Roman Gabriel, and then that school stopped their program. He uh, had some pretty good teammates there. Al Smith of Houston, J.C. Pearson, defensive back, used to be of Kansas City. On third down. And it is first down, Aubrey Matthews. And Cornelius Bennett makes the tackle at the 28, and the Bill say fumbled, but no official signal. Now they're saying ball down at the 28. Nice little delay run by Aubrey Matthews. The Lions created a crowd right around him. And Dave Craig, a high percentage completion. Uh, you got, maybe you, we will or will not pick up the crowd, but this is a nice delay inside. Mickey Washington, the man in coverage, going backwards a little bit. Quite a drive with Barry Sanders touching the ball only once. Started back at the three yard line. Smith oh. after Craig screams it. Eric Lynch, first down at the 15. 13 more as Craig just riddling this Buffalo defense. Over 300 yards today for the 36-year-old from Schofield, Wisconsin. Smith, 78. Daryl Talley, 56. Good block by Lynch. Slows down Daryl Talley ever so slightly, and then that really seals the fate for Buffalo. When you can get the block on the blitzer and be the receiver on the blitzer, there's one less tackler there. Well, out of first today, that was Lynch's first catch of the season. Look at those numbers for Dave Craig. Four misses. Sanders. And 
and the Bills has controlled him well. Daryl Talley right there for Buffalo. Yeah, but you know, I think this is probably a very good game if, as it stands now, 21 14, and if Detroit can win a game without the services of, uh, of, of Barry Sanders. I mean, I, I do think that their offensive coaches try to figure out ways not to include Barry Sanders in a series or two just to give him a little rest. And they've done a great job of that today. More left. Perriman in the slot. Seven minutes and change left. Blitz. Nikki Washington. The throw. Touchdown, Perriman. You can't throw better than Dave Craig has in this game. joins Aubrey Matthews and Herman Moore as the touchdown receptions and Craig with a phenomenal throwing day. Well he started his career in a dome in Seattle. Maybe he prefers the dome better. Jason Hansen adds the extra point. 28-14 Lions. Craig 19 for 23, 337 yards, three TDs. This is Perriman, safety blitzes. Darby has to come over and pick him up. Perriman stares down Darby, stares right at him, and then breaks away, and another beautiful throw by Dave Craig. Yeah. Well, the former college relief pitcher, Dave Craig, is six for six and 93 yards on the drive. Now, he told us when his game finishes, he's going bow hunting. I'm sure he hopes he has the same kind of percentages with that bow. Yeah. Looking, looking for deer. There are a lot of outdoorsmen on this Detroit Lions football team. Perriman with his fourth touchdown. One of the many great football talents out of Miami. That is little brother Rod is happy. Rod, who was in a traffic accident in a coma for a while, but okay. Brett's giving thanks for today. Short kick. Copeland. And he makes it to the 27-yard line, and uh, Lions close to piling on. Timeout. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Microsoft, where do you want to go today? By Braun Electric Shavers, for the world's most recognized shave. And by Coca-Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. Welcome back. A concerned Buffalo bench now down by two touchdowns. Time running out in the fourth quarter. The other sidelines, Dave Craig celebrating one of his best passing days. 337 yards. And Kelly's pitched it well, too. Underneath to Metzelars to the 34-yard line. Spielman and Johnson, another tackle. This uh, score now pretty much takes Thurman Thomas out of the mix. I mean, Buffalo's got to throw it on every down. He becomes a receiver, but not a ball carrier. He goes out. Short slot on the right. Second and three. Spielman breaks it up. Thomas wants a flag, and a late flag is thrown. Defensive pass interference, number 59, spot foul, first down. Here's Spielman. This is, and, and Thurman Thomas is running the pattern here. It's a zone, and Spielman goes through Thurman Thomas. Close, but uh, the late flag. First down at the 41. Thomas out of the backfield, steps out at the 48-yard line. Clock will continue to run as soon as they mark it. We're not yet to the five-minute mark. At the 48. So the Lions willing to give up short yards. Let 
Buffalo use up the clock with a two touchdown lead. Thomas again. You were right. He won't be running it, but they'll use him as a receiver. A gifted receiver had to learn that when he became a professional football player. And the reason he's getting the ball is you've got middle linebacker coverage on Thurman Thomas. Spielman has got him. And Chris Spielman does a lot of things very well, but he can't cover Thurman Thomas. Seven catches now for Thomas and 49 yards. Actually, he's produced more yardage than Barry Sanders today. Thomas picks up the blitz and they throw complete to the Brooks, the veteran. And Brooks, who played at Boston University, has another Buffalo first down, 13 on the play. Very consistent receiver. At, uh, Thurman Thomas goes out that time. Uh, that time, uh, Spielman blitzed to consume Thurman Thomas, keep him in the backfield. Steve Tasker, used sparingly as a receiver, is in for Brooks. He's wide out to the right. Kelly eludes the rush of Dan Owens and throws it away. Owens, who played at Southern California, has a couple of sacks as a reserve this year and almost had number three. Yeah, but Kelly, frankly, does a great job of avoiding this sack. I mean, Owens has got him dead in the crosshairs. And Kelly able to make that uh, John Elway looking reverse left turn to avoid the sack. Second and ten. Hand off to Jordan. Well, you're right. He has great explosion, does Jordan, and showed terrific patience yes. for a young running back not to not to run into the pile, waited for something to develop, and sure enough, found 12 yards. Well, it was a blitz. You're going to see the blitz coming, and his patience shows when he waits for those blitzers to go by. Excellent job. Looks like he's been behind that offensive line a lot. 24 yards for Jordan. Coming in, had only 16 all season. Kelly with one man around his ankles, able to find Andre Reed. Benny Blades made the tackle. You're going to spot that at uh, near the 15-yard line. Clock, four and a half minutes to go. That the Bills like, need a touchdown and the ball back in a hurry. Yes, they look like Antonio London that was at the feet of Jim Kelly. But uh, this, this Buffalo Bills, a great reserve of winning. They, they don't get flustered. They may not get it done, but the good presence of mind here. Kelly, open field ahead, and Kelly scores! 15 yards for Jim Kelly, and Buffalo back in it. His first rushing touchdown of the year. The defense spreads. And Kelly, he shows a lot of nerve and a lot of guts, and sometimes very little sense. I mean, he sticks his head in the end zone there just like he's a kid. Did somebody come and hit me in the field. Yes. Good, huh? Brian McNeil was the man on the goal line, unable to stop him. And the Lions' lead is to 7, 28, 21, 404 remain. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call now and ask for our football special. When it's got to be good, and it's got to be now, it's got to be Domino's. On a beautiful day in the Midwest, sunny and temperature around 40 degrees. No big snow yet here in Michigan. 28-21, the Bills pull within seven on a Jim Kelly gallop of 15. And uh, now do you try the onside sure. kick or is it too soon? Certainly Detroit is set up with their hands team expecting the onside kick. Bruce DeHaven, the special teams coach, is out there trying to give last-minute instructions to uh, Steve Christie. Last week, of course, Chicago converted the onside kick. So, But that was in the middle of the game yes. where it was not expected. On the other hand, Bills with four minutes plus and two timeouts. Why not kick it away and tell your defense, hey, stop Detroit? Well, I agree with this choice. I really do by Buffalo. What? You think they're going to outside it? Yes. I, I think it's a very good idea. Two years ago, they could do that with their defense. They can't do it now. Well, Lions think it's an onside. Let's see if Christie accommodates. 
Now with everyone up front, he decides to kick to Mel Gray at the seven. And Gray to the 23-yard line, and Tasker can't believe there was no penalty. He was tackled from behind. Time up. Until their day is maybe if they're fortunate, they'll get to cheer for the Central Michigan Chippewas. <laughs> they in state. <laughs> on the Bills defense. Barry Sanders in a crowd and a gain of just a couple. So we said at the start, the 2020 vision of the Lions and the ball, Barry Sanders. Look at this pattern of the Lions. Touchdown, punt, touchdown, punt. So if uh, you're a Buffalo fan, it uh, figures uh, time that you're going to get the ball back. Yeah, uh, you, you want the, everything to stay the same for that drive chart that uh, Detroit has to punt. Sanders with two on first down. Clock running, and uh, Dave Craig, the veteran, knows how to use every second now. Sanders, a total of only 45 yards today. Herman Moore. Twisting away from three bills. He can run, too. They had him shy of the first down. He picks up 14 more. Thomas Smith was the guy who missed the tackle. Now I, I think it's going to force Buffalo to call timeouts. Just a hitch. Again, he catches it with the hands, gets up. Great agility. He's not a small receiver. 6'4", 210. Yeah. This That's is a uh, career game for Herman Moore, well, at least prior to the season. Prior to this year, 120 yards in a game was his tops. Now uh, we'll check to see uh, previously this year if he had more than 169. He's had a sensational game. Well, Buffalo should be calling timeouts here, Dick. Sanders. And Bruce Smith makes the stop right at the line of scrimmage. Two-minute timeout coming up, and will they use one before that? Uh, they didn't do this very well. I mean, you need to save time for your offense. And you just bought Detroit another 45 seconds. The two-minute timeout. Buffalo has two timeouts left. They trail by seven. Chris Spielman, Lions defensive leader. One of the few times you'll see him not pacing the sidelines. <laughs> Stops to talk. <laughs> other than losing, the only other that he hates more is the fact that the, the uh, offense is on the field. He, yeah. wa he wants to be in there. Would prefer to play both sides and preferably 52 weekends a year. Dave Craig, uh, headliner game for him today, 20 for 24. Spake to Sanders. And incomplete to Ron Hall. That's only the fifth pass he's missed all day. Henry Jones on the coverage, and uh, inside pressure forced him to throw quickly. Yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised, too, to see Dave Craig on that play action fake turn his back to the defense. I'm surprised that the Lions elected to throw, and that stops the clock for Buffalo. Yeah, no. 154 left. Third and 10. What's worked for them here? The slant, the hitch and go, a screen to Barry Sanders. And uh, the Bills use their second timeout. So Buffalo is about to get the ball with 148 left. I can't pick out where Hanson is. Yeah, he's the inside Bennett. Boy, he does a great job of uh, just shedding Doug Wydell and getting to the quarterback. It looked like uh, Dave Craig was walking way, looking way downfield there, Dick. I'm kind of surprised. Short timeout, 40-second timeout. One the NR opening. <laughs> we saw the picture of this young man. Michigan sports historians think back to the period of time when he was known as the Armada. Yeah, but I couldn't, get, I couldn't get 37. Our numbers, uh, we only had a few numbers, and Oak, Oak Walker wore 37. And yeah, I, I want to know where that helmet is, Mr. Andrew. We didn't have any face masks. That'll explain that old broken nose. Uh, yeah. 
by your partner. <laughs> you, you look a lot like Chuck Bednarik. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So, you want to ruin my holiday. Montgomery to Burks. job by the Lions downfield. 47-yard kick minus two on the return and Ty Halleck with the tackle. Timeout. They are the critical numbers. The Bills need seven to tie and they've got a minute 35 seconds left and one timeout remaining or Marv Levy's team would go home six and six by far their worst performance since 1987. The dominant AFC team of the 90s. Four Straight AFC titles. They start from the 16 yard line. Kelly gets one to Thomas for about nine. Willie Clay with a tackle, and Kelly hurries his team to the line of scrimmage. And of course, as we said many times, that red gun attack is so valuable at this time of the game because that's what they practice all day long. That's what they play. Whoops, that slipped out of his hands. Willie Clay, touchdown Lions. First interception today, and now an interception for his first career touchdown. Well, they, they've been going to Thurman Thomas out there in the flat a lot in the last two series. Detroit finally caught on. Detroit with only seven interceptions all year in 11 games, seven, and Clay with two today. with the extra point that seals a Buffalo's doom. Here is Thurman Thomas. Here is Willie Clay. They've been finding Thurman Thomas out here all afternoon. And Willie Clay this time reads Jim Kelly beautifully. Breaks underneath. It did look like it slipped out of his hand. Not thrown well at all. Made it easy for Clay to come up with the interception and the score. Yeah, just a look at it. Floated high and Clay with the right move. Had pressure in his face. The interception happened right in front of Wayne Fox, too. Yeah, the Lions, uh, I'm sure for their fans and their coach, looking better and better in those throwback uniforms. 1935 was Detroit's first NFL championship. Uh, these were the unis. Yeah, well, just like the San Diego Chargers should go back to the white helmets, the Detroit Lions should stay in those blue stockings. Jim Kelly. Well, when you're six and six, you wonder now, will this finally be the end of this Buffalo dynasty? But with such a scramble a week from today and one Buffalo win, and uh, you say, well, here they are back in sure. it. And that's why Sunday's games, and we hope you'll be with us on NBC, a terrific lineup. But this Buffalo team will not go quietly. They will go kicking and fighting and scratching, Dick. Hanson dribbles one down. Taken by Mark Pike. And Pike out to the 43-yard line. While we have a moment, we want to extend from all of us at NBC Sports, from our president, Dick Ebersole, executive producer, Tommy Roy, coordinating producer football, John Faratsis, John Gonzalez, our director, all the men and women, a lot of... A lot of our veteran cameramen, audio people that you know could have elected to stay home with their families today, but they've made this part of their tradition. I'm here to provide you with these uh, pictures and sounds, and that's our way of saying we hope your Thanksgiving is the best ever. Thanksgiving. You know, thank you is really a most powerful uh, expression we have in our language. Flag down as Kelly has to throw it away. Not over yet here at NBC Sports. Yeah, from the 
from some of the uglies at least <laughs> Amberg and Trumpy we go I mean, this is where you call contrast in television that's what makes it so exciting to the uh, cheerleaders that represent uh, the Lone Star Cowboys uh, you can master a segue sir did you they look that? like that in high school do you remember no, no. No, well, they were younger too, I guess. They didn't even look like that on the calendar on the garage wall either. That'll be immediately following on our NFL live postgame report. Plus, uh, Anna Storm will have interviews. Uh, she's trying to collar Dave Craig. What a game for that long shot. Craig. Jordan. Get out of bounds. And he, he just does at the Detroit 48 yard line. Perriman, one of the three touchdown catches from Dave Craig. Craig's 351 yards today is the most passing yards by a Lion quarterback in seven seasons. Wow. Chuck Long was there then. He's on Chuck the sideline. 362 now. against Green Bay. How about that? Thanks to uh, Slingshot Ross Schneider and for his numbers today. Joe Costanza, his support. Well, is it or isn't, is it not the end of the Buffalo Bills? The uh, Detroit Lions could care less, but you know, with the expansion coming up. Don't get out the spade too no, soon. No, 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 but with the expansion coming up, there are an awful lot of players on this team, no matter what they finish this year, and get a lot of interest from other places in the NFL. Jordan and uh, one of the men of the day, Willie Clay, with a tackle. That might be it. Yep, Kelly says enough. The Detroit Lions in this 55th traditional game on Thanksgiving led by a free agent acquisition, Dave Craig. A near career game for Craig and Wayne Fonts team is back even at six and six. The Buffalo Bills go home. Six up, six down. 35-21, and the employee owners of Avis salute the game's most valuable player, Dave Craig, is the winner of today's We Try Harder Award. Craig, 20 for 25, 351 yards, three touchdown passes, an impeccable game for the man from Milton, Avis, the official rental company of the NFL. And... Uh, Big, strong, honorable mention Avis gives to Herman Moore. Seven catches, 169, and a touchdown. And, of course, the con second play of the game uh, set the tone. Dick, I've never seen Dave Craig throw the ball better. I mean, can you think of one that he really missed? I can't either. That's how accurate he was for most of the 80% complete today. Once again, the final score, the Lions 35, the Bills 21. Stay tuned for the Head & Shoulders NFL Live post-game report for Bob Trumpy and Hannah Storm. This is Dick Enberg saying so long and a happy holiday from the Pontiac Silverdome. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports in our 30th year of covering the NFL.